So how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Eric. Well, I'm here with uh, George Gallo and Vernon Davis, uh, the actor and director of The Ritual Killer. I guess I will start with uh, uh, George. You have uh, quite extensive, uh, uh, yeah, pretty prolific uh, writing credits, and uh, as well as directing. And sometimes you write, some, or sometimes you direct the things you write. Sometimes you direct things other people write. What's what's the decision process in uh, deciding? what you're going to direct and what you're not. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not that thoughtful. It, it, it's a little more haphazard than you might think. I mean, it, it, in, in the case of this, uh, I, uh, Morgan was a, originally interested in the script and I've done, this is the fifth movie I've done with Morgan. And, uh, so he, he, we, we talked about it. Uh, the producer was a friend of mine. He talked to me about it, and I, I when I re originally read it, I said, I don't really do this kind of movie. This is, I mean, I love these kind of movies. I just don't do them. You know, I, I tend to, you know, I could have easily turned this movie into a comedy. You know, I mean, I just, just the way I think, because I'm always looking for humor. So I originally I said to them, I, I don't want to do it. But then I started to think about it. And some of my favorite films are, are those films of the 70s, like William Friedkin movies, like uh, French Connection, uh, Sorcerer, Cruising, The Exorcist, you know. And what I actually did was I looked at Cruising seemed the closest to me uh, in, ter in terms of the tonality of, of what this movie is. So I watched Cruising a whole bunch of times. And I know Billy Friedkin, so I called him. And I said, Billy, it's it's George Gallo. I says, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do this movie that you probably should have done 35, 40 years ago. And uh uh could you give me some pointers? And he gave me some excellent thoughts. He he uh he said uh, a couple of things. He said, Don't can I say can I curse or not? Oh, go for it. He said, Don't come up with a bullshit climax because the end of the movie doesn't know it's the end of the movie. And I went, Okay, that's a great idea. And he goes, end big. And I went, okay. And he goes, and let, let the scenes play out. And he goes, don't judge anything. Don't judge anything. If somebody acts abhorrent, don't judge it. He goes, don't get in the way. Don't be a filter. Don't go, oh, I don't like that. That upsets me. Goes, don't do that. He says, just record what's happening in front of you. And, uh, and that's what I did. So, uh, so, it, it, so that's why I chose this because I figured, you know what? I, I want to not be safe i want to try something i want to reach a little bit you know yeah and vernon i, I love your character randoku in this uh he's got a he's got a really kind of calm but sinister vibe to him and i really uh appreciated that what what kind of brought you into the fold of the <laughs> ritual killer well um well the role was really well uh so producer named joe lemon that knows my my manager they connected and he he was talking about like he was looking for a character uh, for Rando someone to play Randoku. And my name came up and I read the script and I fell in love with it because I fell in love with it because I, I knew that I had a lot to go into it based on my backstory and what I've gone through in my life. It just made sense. It made sense for that character. He was a, seemed like a unique character. Um, I saw him with this with this accent. I saw him knowing the actual language. So I started when I when I figured that out, I started to put all the pieces together. I reached out to a girl on Instagram in South Africa. She helped me with the translation and I called up my dialect coach and we started to work. Yeah. I, I kind of wish my, uh, my co-host uh, Greg was here. Cause he's a huge De Palma fan and I got a, a bunch of De Palma vibes coming from this um, and a, mm -hmm. a little bit of seven. And that may have come from Morgan Freeman. Because I was thinking, uh, oh, is this like Somerset, like 25 years later? Granted, the name and the history doesn't match up. But uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what can you say to that as far as like uh, just kind of making a pretty uh, in-depth thriller and just uh, any De Palma inspiration well, that may or may not be there? It's it's funny you mentioned De Palma. De Palma directed the first script that I wrote, uh, which was a comedy, which was rare for him. I mean, he started out doing comedies with Hi, Mom and Greetings, you know, but uh so I, I I got to know Brian pretty well. I, I it's impossible to make a serial killer movie with Morgan Freeman and not somehow those movies don't come up in your mind. And 
obviously David Fincher has a very specific style, you know, and the one thing that was great about Seven was I, I was never quite sure what city it took place in. It looks like LA, but there's an elevated train in it and it's raining all the time. So it, it looked, it, there was something slightly for me otherworldly about it, you know. Um, in this movie, I try to do the opposite. I tried to almost make it feel quasi documentary like, and it, not where you became aware of it in terms of a style, but I, I was just going back to that Billy Friedkin idea. I was just trying to do it with as little di directorial, nonsensical flourishes as possible. And just, you know, I'd say, all right, just put the camera right here. You know, let's just, I know it's not pretty, but fuck it. That's, that's where I want it, you know? And you know, so that, that's sort of, that was my stylistic approach. Uh, but yeah, the Morgan reference, it's, it's impossible not to go there on some level, you know? Yeah. And Vernon, uh, you have, uh, you have, uh, you know, not hanging off uh, airplanes or anything, but uh, you got uh, some light parkour scenes here. Uh, do you get to do a bunch of your stunts and, uh, like what 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 was it like doing sort of the action scenes in this? It was great. It was great. A lot of we we talked about this earlier, but a lot of the scenes that required me to do my own stunts, like sliding down the side of that wall on the pipe, I I used my athletic system for that, which came across really nice uh, when you watch the film. So we were trying to talk him out that, of it. He just wouldn't hear it. He just did all of his own <laughs> stuff. <you know? laughs> <laughs> it was fun, man. It was fun. I, I was like, look, I can go down the side of this pipe with one hand. It's like, you can't really? Joe was like, can you really? I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I probably, probably don't want to get too much into this, but uh, let me tell you how big of an idiot I am. Uh, I am a 49ers fan, and uh, I was telling my brother that I was uh, talking to you, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm talking to the, the director and one of the actors for The Ritual Killer. It's like, oh, Vernon Davis and it's like that Vernon Davis I'm like no no, no it's gotta be some other guy and I watched the movie and it's like oh yeah that's definitely not him <laughs> so uh you, you killed it there you you definitely pulled the wool over my eyes that's great that's funny <laughs> but uh so um I, I guess uh, Vernon also I mean you got a you got a bunch of acting stuff coming up you've done some producing what was the transition like going from <laughs> NFL to uh Hollywood I guess well, I was a firm believer when I was playing that you have to do whatever you want to do in the future, you have to do it now. And for me, the little time that I had, I started taking classes. I started um, showing up in films, reaching out, going to different festivals and just surrounding myself with talented people. And then after I was done playing, I had this script that I wanted to make. It was my very first film. I made it for $170,000 of my own money. And I sold it to BT for five hundred fifty thousand. So oh, uh, nice score! I scored. I scored. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, oh, that was cool. Yeah, that kind of gave me the awakening. I was like, oh yeah, I, wanna, I gotta keep doing this. And then I went on and went on and went on. And and they say, you know, uh, the ritual killer was presented to me, and bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, and also George. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Being bottable. <laughs> I did the opposite. I made a film of, with a million of my own money, and I sold it for ninety thousand. I didn't do it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, George, you're also you're also quite prolific, and especially like the last couple of years, you've been doing like uh, two, three movies a year, it seems. And uh, the movies you got in post production, how, how do you maintain that kind of that kind of work ethic? Just the go, 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 and and to get them green light, which is a miracle for most people to even do one, let alone. Well, if you, if you look at, if you look at uh, my career, you know, I, sometimes I was working a lot and sometimes I wasn't, you know, it's, and if I learned anything in the years that I wasn't working what was, you know, cause you know, you could go like three or four or five years will go by and you're like, yeah, I'm not doing anything, you know? I, and then suddenly it all starts coming at you again. It's all very cyclical. It's very strange. And I learned that I wasn't going to be, let's put it this way. A lot of times people who act very selective, they might be being selective because financially they're very secure or they feel very comfortable doing one kind of thing. I, I wanted to, I wanted to be better. I always want to be better. I want to like try things that I, I may fail at. 
you know, and, and I don't want to get to the end of my life and go, you know, I turned down a whole bunch of opportunities because I was scared. So when more opportunities started to come at me, I just said yes, because I said, well, I can learn something from this. I've never done a detective movie. I could learn something from that. I've never done a big over the top slapstick movie. I could learn something from that, you know? So I would like, like I did a movie called the comeback trail. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's supposed to come out in August with De Niro and Tommy Lee Jones and Morgan Freeman. Okay. And that's like a Buster Keaton movie. So I got to really like relearn all the Buster Keaton stunts and watch Charlie Chaplin movies, you know? And I, so you're just always learning, you know? And, 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 uh, and like with this, I was watching all these Billy Friedkin movies. So like there's all these d- different places you can go. And and and, and look, I, I, I'm always nervous when I step into making a film. I think you'd have to be an idiot not to be, you know. But at the same time, what, if I've learned anything by being in the business for 40 years and, and getting older, is the only thing worse than working on something is not working on something. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to opt for working, you know, and if something comes my way, I'm going to take a shot at it and do it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned Buster Keaton and it's, it's amazing that uh, he didn't die like 20 times over uh, just because of oh, the stunts he did. The house was... that they... Oh yeah. Yeah. And on front of the train, like, like there, there's so many opportunities for death. Yeah, but he's I... hanging on to the front and his feet are dragging on the rails. I mean, yeah. yeah. But I like when you um like just on with your own filmmaking, you know, you could probably couldn't get away with stuff like that today because you'd get in a lot of trouble. And more importantly, you'd probably hurt someone. But how do yeah. you maintain safety on the set when doing stuff like that? Um well there weren't I mean there were just in this movie there were just more fights and stuff. And yeah. I mean you could you know you could break a finger on a fight or you could fall when Vernon jumped off the wall and jumped from building to building to building. Uh, like I, we didn't want, I didn't want him to do that. But like I said, before you knew it, he was doing it. It was like, we were setting up and he went through it with the stunt coordinator. And then Vernon, I just saw him suddenly, I said, all right, let's shoot this. And he was already in, he was at number one position one. I says, all right, I guess he's going to do this himself. You know? <laughs> so, but thankfully nobody got hurt. Yeah. And, and Vernon, what's kind of your take on just, uh, um, I guess, maybe the responsibility of actors and stunts, because obviously you do your own stunts, but, you know, um, they always say like, uh, you know, if Brad Pitt's in a movie and he does his own stunt and he gets hurt, then that, you know, that uh, movie is uh, kind of sidelined for a bit. What What's yeah. your kind of thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. Well, you have to be careful. I think there's certain things that that. People like uh, uh, like Tom Cruise or whoever can. There's certain things they can do. There's certain things they can't do. You want to be careful as long as they're safe and they can get it done. I think that's a great thing. And even for myself, I'm I'm going to really make sure that I'm cognizant and paying attention to to what's safe and what's not safe. And if I, if I don't think I can do it without getting hurt, then I'm probably not going to do it. Yeah. Also, uh, kind of back to the ritual killer. Um, <laughs> I, I noticed like uh granted they're cops and they're I, I kind of it doesn't take place in the Midwest, but I got that kind of vibe because I'm from Nebraska. So I, I know a lot of people uh that almost mm-hmm. are identical to Cole Hauser's character. Um just you know on the surface. Uh but there's also like a lot of uh blue lives kind of iconography in the uh cop shop there. But was that like a statement of anything, or was that just uh was that just uh background of what would be there for the characters well we shot in a real uh functional police station uh that we didn't which we shot in mississippi uh and the police department they, they were very uh gracious to let us go in there and we were filming while they were working and uh, we were using their offices and stuff and Again, going back to that Billy Friedkin idea, you know, Billy's always about making it real, making it real, making it real. So, like, I would walk around, I'd say, man, this is a depressing looking place. It, you know, it's like all just concrete and it's all painted the same colors. And uh, then there's a, some stuff on the walls, like, you know, citations and plaques and stuff and little model cars. And I was like, you know what? Don't dress it, leave it alone. Let's just shoot because I think it, I I believe that those were real places. Obviously, when you see it in the movie, they feel like working, real environments where the cops are working. And and then uh, 
you know, with coal, like you said, I, I, I feel I, I'm glad that you, you you dug what he did as an actor because I did too. And we kept talking that we kept saying that he was a guy that was very unhinged in, in a lot of ways. And on the surface, he was presenting one sort of person, but inside he was cracking up. He was talking with dead wife. He was drinking himself to sleep. He probably didn't sleep a lot of nights. He was really, really an unhinged individual. And uh, so we we kept saying, all right, let's just do it. Let's do it without apology. That's who this guy happens to be. Let's, and you know, as William Freakin said, you shoot it without judgment. You just shoot it. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think we got time. I want to get into some spoilers, but before that, I'll do the regular wrap okay. up questions and then and then we can do some spoilers after that. Um, but the the so my co-host Bruce, he has a uh, box and people put movies in the box and he draws one out every week that we watch and review. And the movies in the box are usually um typically something that's either personal to you or maybe a, a movie that you saw that oh man this this thing was really good and no one ever talks about it i, I wish mm -hmm. someone would just watch this and talk about it um but for each of you what what is a movie you each like to put in the box that no one ever talks about or, or maybe something uh underseen or maybe something uh, I, it's just I personal. Adore, there's a lot of those there's probably a couple that come to mind but i mean uh i adore the original taking of pelham one two three. Oh yes <laughs> it, it's probably it's in my top five and and uh or certainly my top 10 uh then there's another very interesting and, and bizarre movie that i just adore that sydney pollack directed called castle keep i don't know if you're familiar from 1969 a war movie and it's more like a it's more like a dream or a memory than an actual story. And I, 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 there's a lot in that movie that I adore. And Vernon, you got one as well? Mm, I'm going to have to say, well, I found that a lot of people, with it, for this guy to be as famous as he is, uh, Denzel Washington, I'm talking, he, a lot of people have not seen The Equalizer. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've seen all kinds of movies. But when, we, when I talk about the Equalizer, I'm like, dude, you ever seen the Equalizer? Dude, the the part where he turns around and locks the door, and right away I'm like, dude, you fucked up. You dude, fucked that movie is, oh my god, <laughs> oh, one that's of my great. favorite, one of my favorite. Yes, yeah, unbelievable. Oh, those are great picks. And also, I guess just to kind of uh, add to that, what, what's something uh, for each of you of your own, uh, within, within your own credits that uh, maybe you've done in the past that it's like, you know, I did good here and not a lot of people seen it and I wish they would kind of go back to it. For me? Yeah. I think all of them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, no, I mean, the... <sighs> It all depends. I know it's a great question. I mean, I thought Middlemen was a good movie. I, I, uh, I, oh, I, I yeah. That. And there was a little movie I did that I ended up paying for. I ended up making my so-called Local Color. I don't know if you ever saw that. I've not seen that one. Yeah, it was with Trevor Morgan and, and Armin Mueller-Stahl and, and the late Ray Liotta. And I, I wrote about, I wrote and directed a movie about me when I went away for one summer, because I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a painter. And a, and a world famous painter lived not far from where I was born and I tracked him down. He was an old, angry, bitter fucking drunk. And uh, I talked him into taking me on a painting trip and I, <laughs> which was a mistake in some ways because he was hammered by eight o'clock in the morning. And, uh, but it, it was sort of a coming, it, not sort of, it's definitely a coming of age story. And I, I thought I thought that was a very sweet movie. All right. And Vernon, you got one as well? Yeah, for me, I'd probably say um, A Day to Die with um, starring Bruce Willis. I think that I thought I did really good in that movie, that film. And A Message from Brianna, one of the first films that I did by myself that I sold to BET. Awesome. I'll definitely be sure to check that those out. And uh, thank you for showing up here. And Are I you appreciate it. Appreciate talking to you guys. Uh, we'll we'll, yeah, we'll get into the spoilers here in a can, second. Can I say it, something too? You, you can say it, whatever it you want. It is such a pleasure to talk to somebody who knows and loves movies. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many people I talk to about movies. They don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And I'm like, <laughs> dude. And I mean, even some film critics I've met. I'm like, 
I mean, I, I talk about like the French New Wave, and you know they don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. They start nodding like it is. I'm like, beside, you know, uh, uh, yeah. breathless. Have you seen Breathless? Uh, like, come on. <laughs> I don't, you know, you and I can't, you can't. It's like, I want to be a painter, but who's Picasso again? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, shut up, Four, shut up. 400 blows. I don't have porn hub. What right, true <laughs> well, One of the great endings of all time when that kid runs into that close-up. I mean, just stop it. Yeah. Um, but I uh, think thank you very much. And no, it's an honor and a pleasure, oh. man.